President Mohamed Buhari has urged to, been urged to declare a state of emergency as Secure North and North is Bleeding protests take place in Abuja and Kanu. The All Progressive Congress government has set Nigeria 20 years backwards, says Governor Nyesum Wike of River State. All this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anako. A petition seeking a state of emergency in Sakoto, Zamfara, Katsina and other states in the northwest has garnered 28,000 signatures on change.org, even as the insecurity in the region continued to escalate. Now, the petition, which was started um, by one Al-Haslam, Al -Haslam, uh, called on President Muhammad Buhari to secure the northern lives with the hashtag secure north and hashtag North is bleeding. As more people signed uh, the petition, groups and individuals berated the federal government and the Department of State Services, and the police had also dispersed and arrested protesters in Kanu and Abuja. Now, the petition is asking that a state of emergency be immediately declared in Sakoto, Zamfara, and Katsina states, and even other states in the Northwest uh, that have been besieged by armed violence and militant attacks. Well, joining us to discuss this further is Shehu Musa Gabam, he's the National Secretary of the uh, SDP, and Samaila Musa, who is uh, the Director of Strategy and Programs Coalition of Northern Groups. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Um, Samila, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Great. Very well. I'm going to start with you. Um, looking at these protests, this is something that you hardly see um, coming from the north. What are your uh, sentiments about the protest? I saw the pictures and some of the videos uh, emerging from those protests, both in um, Sokoto and in Abuja. As, the, as someone who works with the CNG, who seems to be uh, representing these northern, northern groups, um, what is your perspective? Yeah, you know, the, 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 point, the point is this, right? Uh, what's going on in, uh, in Northwest right now as we speak is not even banditry. The best way to describe it is genocide, you know. So that if you have genocide, it, it, uh, you know, in place in a particular section of the country, uh, I think the issue of protests that you're seeing at this level is actually... Uh, being downplayed to a very large extent. And even though uh, the state apparatus are also uh, moving it, you know, shutting it down, they don't want anybody to talk. You saw the threats that went down about a lady who tried to stage, you know, to lead a protest in Kano the other day, how, you know, uh, they invited her over and issued some kind of threat and made her, they had to back down from it, you know. So when the state is desperate, is more desperate, to make sure that everyone is being gagged rather than addressing the issue, then it means uh, uh, Nigeria is actually at the brink of collapse. And so, you know, the, the protest you see now is, is just a mere chance play because at the end of the day, when the people don't have any other choice, I mean, perhaps the, the protest will is going to just face uh, the, the government squarely. But you see, uh, it's unfortunate if people try to address an issue. You are a government in place. You came on the man. Samala, you there, King? Okay. So many security issues and, and corruption. I mean, and, and corruption. Are you hearing? Yes, I can hear you. Go Hello? ahead. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, I said if a government comes into, uh, 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 come into power riding on the mantra of, uh, uh, you know, curbing insecurity and curbing uh, corruption, and rather than even making sure that it remains as emitted, rather it's escalating. Both, both slogans are, you know, are, are being trashed in the garbage right now as we speak. But mm. what I found very unfortunate is that nobody is free to talk. The whole northern the whole northern Nigeria has been gagged. You know, it's either people are afraid to talk 
or the ones who are perceived to talk are big issues some threats you know uh, and that's very very unfortunate if this has actually happened under uh, 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 buhari's presidency the same person who cried on national tv when you know he couldn't get it he tried about for about the fourth time before he came to power cried severally that you know and the, the basis of this cry is that the, his people are actually suffering people are getting killed every day the only the reason why i can take this government serious at this time is if the president is having some insomnia somewhere as a result of sleeplessness uh, because of the killings going on but rather what do we see you know it doesn't even show some care is let, let, let me just button you know, there it's not a main cause for some let me police. let me pass in there um I, I i'm just curious they're talking about oh. being gagged recently um daily trust newspaper put up an editorial a very damning one by the way about mr president and um you know the fact that a loss is happening in the north the president has not necessarily visited um and we know what happened to the editor of that newspaper and the response of the government towards so if if, if this editorial was something that the government um, didn't have to debunk then why are we having these protests i'm not asking you to answer that question but then why do you presume that the north decided to come out in this number to protest because we hardly see it we instead hear the elders speaking on these issues but now we're seeing more and more young people uh, i mean knowing that in this country when you if you decide to protest even though it's not written anywhere in our law books you seem to be clamped down upon us. We saw what happened in Abuja the other day. Why did it seem to be a good idea to come out and protest? Because this kind of thing has never happened before in the history of this country. And like I said earlier, this is genocide. You understand? So this, this is quite unprecedented. It's not anything like what people ever experienced, ever. Ever. You get so really, it's not surprising. And you see, what you hear in the media, what you read in the media, is perhaps just a fraction of what is going on there. You know, some of our people is from the coalition of other groups just came back from Sokoto. You need to hear the test testimonies coming out from that place. What is going on there is genocide. Some of these guys have taken over some villages over there. You understand? Mm. They are ruling in those villages. They have taken over governance in some of these places. They, they, you know, so they collect navies and all of that so it, it's nothing like what you what you're reading about in the media really it, it, it's 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 something that has never happened in the history of this, of this country so and that's why i mean nobody will be surprised if people are actually coming out there's quite a lot of people who are not even coming out but they are crying uh, if you understand how so i'm sure you must have seen uh, so many videos of women who are actually crying talking about how they were being raped some other women have sick for asylum you know in all places after they were released because they were raped you mm. know i i watched some of these videos but i couldn't hear back you know tears from my eyes mm. this it is unfortunate now let me go to the petition uh, i looked through that petition and some of the demands uh, that were made uh, on that petition which has had at least twenty-eight thousand signatures so far uh, the protesters made demands what well, one of those demands that stood out for me is that they're asking the northern elders they're asking the emirs to condemn all, all forms of violence you know that was taking place in in their territory and i'm wondering to myself why are the leaders not speaking is it that the leaders are not speaking is it that the emirs are tight-lipped about this issue or is there some political undertone to all of this yeah the both there is some political undertone there is the fear that when you come out to say anything the government you know blacklists you you know may perceive you to be working with the opposition and one thing they're forgetting it's not about party we're talking about human lives being taken on daily basis in their hundreds. You understand? So quite a lot of people are actually also afraid because their own security is also not guaranteed. I can tell you that the conspiracy going on right now, so many people are also afraid that they might speak against this carnage and then maybe some you know, state apparatus, we come after them in the name of banditry. And so, nobody knows what's I'm happening. sorry, uh, uh, just sorry, I need to come in there. Did you just, did you just insinuate 
that that there might be certain people going after those who are speaking up against this in the guise of banditry, is, but then they are state actors. Is this what you're insinuating? That that is the fear. I'm telling you what's the fear. Why would why, why would the state be out. why would the state be um, going under the guise of the same mayhem that is bedeviling be, uh, no, its people? Ask, you don't need to ask. You don't need to ask these questions because if the government is more busy with gagging people rather than going after the problem itself, rather than solving the problem itself, then you whatever conspiracy theories that come out from there is not surprising because i would perceive i mean i, I would assume that also supposedly at this time what the government should be busy doing is not even listening to who is talking but rather go to work i'd love to see my president you know rolling off his sleeves and saying he hasn't slept in the past for, for 48 hours hmm. that's the way he's joining all the clients you understand mm -hmm. i want to see President judging out to say he needs some emergency treatment because he's not been able to sleep for one for, for like a week because I don't know how a president can actually sleep with his two eyes closed under this kind of tension that we have it. Okay. Especially in, in, in the Northwest. You understand? So there's so much fear that you don't even know because the people who are talking seems to be the focus and not the criminals themselves. Hmm. So everybody is actually afraid for their lives. This is very interesting. But we're being joined by Shehu Musa Gabam. Uh, he's of the SDP. Um, Mr. Gabam, it's interesting the the um, claims that um, um, Samila is making. They're very damning. But then uh, let's go back to some of the, um, the the things that these the demands that these protesters are making. Another of the demands is that they're asking for a declaration of a state of emergency. Um, and I'm wondering how will it help the situation of things. This is not the first time we're hearing that oh declare a state of emergency in the northeast or in the northwest uh, and because of all that's happening there. But what solutions will it bring if it be done? Well, let me, let me thank you first and foremost, and of course, I uh, appreciate the contribution of Musa. What I'm going to say is not much far from what uh, he has submitted. Look, no responsible government that understands its functions and responsibilities and have taken a lot of office you know, to protect life and property will sit down and allow non-state actors to challenge a democratically elected president, to challenge a democratically elected national assembly, to challenge a democratically elected governor, to challenge a democratically elected members of the state assembly that have all the constitutional powers, have all the authorities to make sure that lawlessness, criminality, carnage are being brought under control. In a situation where the states allow this kind of crime and criminality to grow beyond expectation, you expect all sorts of barbarism, cannibalism, and, and, and so on and so forth. There's a failure of states. The states have failed to act, to create a deterrence, to save lives and property of people in the community, even in the cities. Virtually nowhere is safe right now. Look at just what happened in Imo, the very disturbing pictures that we saw. People have come to something else, rusting fellow human beings. Look at all over the country. It's not just about, 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 the, about the Northwest. The Northwest is so uh, uh, heightened right now because the kinds of killing, the kinds of murdering, maiming, raping, turning children into orphans is not acceptable. Hmm. Not just here, anywhere in the world is not acceptable. And it cannot be acceptable. And for the state to use instrument of state to stop people from expressing their opinion, I think it's, 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 it's much to be desired. The responsibility of government is to protect protesters who are expressing themselves. The responsibility of government is to listen to people that are airing their views, that are agitating for changes, drawing the attention of the government to act faster than they are acting. It's not about the expression of the will, but practicing that will demonstrating that will, that the government have the capacity to operate that will, is what is like it. So what Musa is saying is right. There's a genocide going on. There's an act of barbarism going on. There's a negligence of government going on. There's a failure of the National Assembly to stand very firm and ensure that lives are being protected. In the absence of doing that, the National Assembly have the instrument to take the excesses of the executive and bring them to order. 
this is not happening. Uh, uh, you see, is a recently I saw the deputy speaker reacting that his, his, his town was, was attacked by people. And then the bandits that were arrested were released by the police. This is coming from the deputy speaker of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. How do you deal with that? It's not just happening in one, in one zone. It, it, it has saturated the entire Nigeria as a nation. But it heightened in the northwest because people in the village are being wiped out. Nobody is doing anything about it. Even if the security agencies are doing something about it, the significance of what they are doing is not sufficient for people to acknowledge that something is Let me come in there. Let, let me come in there quickly. Uh, I just want to, I know that the federal government has no one on this show to speak on their behalf, so I'll play the devil's advocate here. Um, when that Daily Trust publication came out, even though they had arrested the editor, the police, um, the federal government did come out with a rebuttal of sorts, and, and they, they said that they were doing the best that they could to deal with this issue. And then there was uh, a statement also made saying that this issue is not just peculiar to Nigeria, that it, it was bedeviling the whole of Africa, including the Sahel region, uh, but that we should not make it uh, about the presidency and about this government. So does this problem that the South um, West, uh, sorry, the Northwest and, of course, other parts of the country uh, are experiencing this level of terrorism and banditry or whatever we want to call it, uh, it, should we be downplaying it in the way that the federal government is, is downplaying? And if the government is saying they've done their best, Mr. Gabam, is their best good enough? Well, I, I, I expect the federal government, the, I expect the federal government to put on a maximum defense. But if you are saying that it's not peculiar to Nigeria, it is Nigeria that are being affected. And Nigeria have the right to speak about what they are going through. We cannot speak about what America is going through. America are facing their own challenges. Other African are facing their own challenges. But domestically here in Nigeria, it is obvious, it is factual, it is visible, it is touchable for you to see the kind of agony, for you to see how people are being turned into orphans, wives being turned into, uh, 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 what, what do you call them, without husbands. You can see how, how children are running helter skelter. So this is what we are saying. The federal government, I know also, have invested billions and billions to buy equipment to Canada, about 15 to Canada, which is very good by, by any standard, and also surveillance equipment. But with the facilities available, with the money that we, I mean, the, the, the money they use to buy all these facilities, what Nigerians expect is to see the minimization of the crime and criminality. You cannot allow state actors to challenge an institution of state. No matter how you want to defend, I would never be part of any, any, any meeting whatsoever or any conspiracy to undermine my country. This is the only country I have. The stability of Nigeria is my priority. I don't want to be, see a Nigeria being internally displaced or being a foreign refugee. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So yes, the federal government can defend itself. But they, they need to go and see physically the, what the victims are going through. The videos are all over. How they are expressing themselves. One of the women was crying. She was raped eight times. You know, it has gone all over the world. So yes, we, are, we have the responsibility to defend our government at all costs. We have the responsibility to ensure that Nigeria as a nation is being defended. But those that we elected from various constituencies of this country have the responsibility to, to do the needful and protect Nigeria. Have okay. the responsibility to that we are given responsibility to protect Nigeria to account okay. for what they are doing. Something must be done extraordinary. Okay. So if they are calling for majesty in certain areas, if they will solve the problem, let it be. The problem is that we want Nigeria to be secured. We want citizens to be secured. I cannot travel from here to Kaduna comfortably. Kaduna is one of the most police roads in Nigeria. Every kilometer you see a checkpoint. But in, in, in the range of a week or so, you see perpetual blockage, kidnapping. How do you express that as a government? Me... We, are, we are not against the, the government as a government, but we are against the policy that have allowed non-state actors to challenge the stability and the of Nigeria. Okay, let me go back to Smila. Smila, why do you suppose it's taken the government so long to figure out how to deal with this issue? Because I asked that question a few seconds ago. If they're saying they've done their best, 
how good is that best that the federal government claims to have done? Well, it's, it's shameful if actually this is their best. You get it. So it's actually shameful. It's shameful not because uh, uh, we have a president. It's shameful because we have a retired general there. It's shameful because the retired general, this wasn't his first time being a president of this nation. It wasn't like oh, we tried anything out. One of the things that was very prominent on his CV was that he's done it before. So he know where the, where the problem is. You know, it's shameful because uh, uh, he happens to be someone who the masses actually felt he was coming to actually wipe their tears. And that is why it's shameful. And I have this uh, just very short mes message to the president or to the president. The same state of emergency that was declared at the villa when Yusuf Buhari had an accident on the bike. I wanted to see such a display. It's not like the president is heartless. At least we saw it at display when his own son, his own biological son, had an accident. The whole villa was in chaos. Everywhere was upside down. So many people you know, were given queries that why did you even allow him in the first place to, to, to go on a bike? You know, I want to see such action. I want to see such kind of passion for the president to realize that the whole of the country is his constituency, the whole of like Nigeria are his own children. He will should be treated like his biological children just the same way he takes use of Buhari. And that is just my clear message, you know. And going forward, I think at this juncture, you know, the National Assembly, even though the rest of Nigeria seems to be dark, the National Assembly should wake up to their responsibilities. They are accountable to their constituents. And it's funny that some of these places where this uh, carnage is worse, you cannot see none of their legislators are actually visible quite a lot of times, except when their father or their cousins are being kidnapped. It is unfortunate. And I want them to also bear this at the back of their mind that whatever you do, you are going to give account to our creator one day. Even if you feel Nigerians cannot ask you, they can't ask you because there's that arrogance. They need to come down from their high horses. They feel they don't owe us any explanation as to what is going on at time. But there is someone that they're going to give an account to. Because and that is why going forward, even in this 2023, people need to understand that the leadership comes with a lot of responsibilities. If you are not ready for it, please don't present yourself. And don't come and start wasting people's life for no reason. That's just my simple message. Let me quickly take you back before I go back to um, um, Mr. Gabam. Uh, there were arrests made during uh, the protests, especially the one in Abuja. Um, I'm curious as to what the, the police and the security agencies' reactions to these protests. I always ask this because protests are supposed to be our democratic rights in this country is it's a right of every nigerian but then we always see the full weight of our security agencies against the protesters as opposed to protecting the protesters from whomever might want to make it become violent but we saw a lot of you know arrests being done some people are of the opinion that the police was just doing its job and some people are saying it could have been better handled but what side of the divide are you on and, and why do you think whatever you think that's another shame. It's, it's, it's shameful because this same president participated in protests. He didn't just participate in protests on the street of Abuja, right to the villa, taking it to the doorstep of the incumbent president at the time. And that's why it's most shameful. This is unfortunate that we have gotten to a stage in Nigeria where the rest of the world have actually advanced. We are taking like 20 years backward to start gagging or start treating people who are coming out to protest as just common criminals. Whereas the criminals, the murderers, are roaming the streets. They're having meetings with governors, having meetings with the security agencies, and yet nothing has been done. You know, so this is the height of it. It's the height of insult. You know, when people feel you should have expressed yourself, you shouldn't come out. Must we all watch until all of us are led to the God God, God, God has talk, but, 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 like Ram? But it, is it really those people that you think it is, or is it just the disposition of the police? This is how they are naturally. That whenever there's Who a protest, the they feel. I'm just wondering. Maybe maybe the police does not understand that responsibility of every person it under this a democratic so, so, dispensation. So, so, so needs to give them orders to protest, even if they don't understand. Let's assume the police does not know what they are doing. Somebody is actually at the helm of affairs. He has all these reports on daily basis. And if he doesn't have it, I think it is it's not worthy to be there, to still be there. But he has this daily report. So and if they are not being pushed, you know, 
I mean, sometimes you can want to give excuse to say, oh, over zealousness of these guys. But I mean, somebody is getting the result. I mean, the reports on daily basis. And if nothing is being done, it means they are being backed by the same people who are the hem of affairs. Mm. Or even if not, they are the one giving them these orders. Nobody must say anything, you know. That's very, very unfortunate that Nigeria is actually uh, being taken back, you know, uh, so many years back, backward. Well, let me go back to Mr. Shou um, Gabam. Um, finally, we also note that um, the human rights lawyer, um, SAN, uh, Femi Falana, has demanded the immediate release of all the protesters, especially the ones who were arrested in Abuja. Um, he's asking that they be um, released. But I want to ask, what response do you presume the North is expecting to get from this protest or from this federal government, knowing this is the caveat. Knowing how our government always responds to issues such as this, this is not the first time. There's so many examples, the NSAS uh, and many other protests and other issues that have called for the attention of this administration. What response are you hoping to get? And if you do not get it, what's the next course of action? Well, you know, Nobody can tell you exactly how human behavior can change. Sometimes human beings, uh, you cannot really determine their shape until something happens. With what is going on, with the level of anarchy going on, with the level of uh, maiming and barbarism that is going on, no one can tell you how this thing will turn into. Because in the absence of protecting your citizens, and your citizens are extremely, extremely vulnerable to gangsters, and nothing is being happening. You will, you will expect anarchy to ensue nationwide. You, you, will, you will expect that people would begin to defend them, uh, their, themselves and their, or their families at all costs in whatever that is available to them. And this is not what we are praying for. And that is why we are telling the federal government the bitter truth. It's not as if we have anything against the federal government. It is the government. It is not in our interest to get the government destabilized. It's not in anybody's interest for the government to destabilize. But the government must also define a way of stabilizing its own administration. The government must also find those that have fallen short of standard in terms of performing their job and their responsibility. The police we are talking about have taken a lot of toll order. A lot of policemen have died along the line. A lot of military personnel have died. A lot of Nigerian, including elected uh, personnel, have died. So it's not about A, B, C, D, E, F. It's about something that has involved entire country. Even northern Nigeria, the largest part of the country, is going through what is going through. And the policemen felt that they will not allow people to express themselves. They were not carrying weapons. They are not carrying knives. They were not carrying anything. They were only using their mouth to say, no, Mr. President, we elected you. Or even if we did not elect you, you are the president of Nigeria. We have the right to express ourselves. We have the right to complain that we are being killed. We are being maimed. There's virtually the action is not sufficient enough to show that the government is remorseful about what is going on. For instance, what happened in Sokoto State? What, why is the coloration? For, for some people to mislead the president and ask him to go for a book lodge, which is a ceremonial thing, where people had been killed, burnt down, and monitored, burned to ashes. How do you defend that? Can that happen in America? You expect Biden to go to any ceremonial occasion? Well, These are hard facts that the government must understand that okay. it is from our heart. There is hatred. There is no element of hatred. But we love our country, we love our citizens, and the president was elected, it's sworn in under the constitution, to protect every life and property of every Nigeria. So it's not just about not like I have said. Boko Haram started from a state in Borno State. It has not saturated everywhere. Kidnapping started from two or three states in the northwest. It has saturated the entire Nigeria. Anarchy, meaning, cannibalism is all over the place right now. So, well, the government must understand some of us that are raising our voice is simply because we love the government. We okay. are not against the government. We are not calling for and But if the government do not manage what is going on, 
Okay. Well, I want to say thank you very much. Um, Shehu Musa Gabam is the National Secretary. Can I quickly add something here? Yeah. Okay, quickly, quickly, because we have to go. Okay. Now, just exactly a year ago, in Kaduna, you know, on our path from the Coalition of Northern Groups, we put up uh, you know, a security summit where we have retired DIGs, retired military generals, you know, clergymen, both Christians and Muslims, you know, gathered in Ariwa House in Kaduna. You, and you know how symbolic Ariwa House is to deliberate on the issue of insecurity and try to see which way forward. You stakeholders came from all over the night in other states. And what do we got at the end of it? Just on the Monday morning, just 20 minutes into that meeting, Hugh Gloves numbering about 300, walked through the streets of Kaduna and stopped that Ariwa House to disperse dignitaries at that meeting. And it was very obvious that these are state apparatus in display. It is unfortunate. How, how, how is it obvious? How is it obvious? Were they wearing uh, we banners or the saying that they're officers or officials or they were sent by the government? How do you, do you say that it's part? obvious? Do you know the funnest part? There is the only security agency that was not present at that place was just the military. The DSS was there. The SIB was there. The police were there. Mopos were there. None of them could say a word to these hoodlums. Why? Because the public order not to touch any of them. None of them was arrested. People were wounded. You know, some of the dignitaries had to escape, leaving their phones behind and all of that. No single arrest was made. How else do you explain this? We also got okay. our intelligence. Some people had advised some of the people who were there and say, oh, I know so-so person. And that evening, they started finding out from them and they say, oh, some persons actually give them money to come and do that. They, some of them don't even know who are the people who hold the meetings there. No any right. other person that is so jobless that will sponsor that kind of event apart from the state. It's well, unfortunate. We can only hope that something good comes out of this. But I want to say thank you. Shehu Musa Gabam is the National Secretary of the Social Democratic Party. And Samaila Musa is the Director of Strategy and Programs Coalition of Northern Groups. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for having this conversation with me. Thank you. thank you. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. Coming up on Plus Politics, Governor of the River State, Nyesom Mwike, accuses the APC government of setting Nigeria 20 years backwards. We'll, we'll talk about it after this break.